Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Well, despite the bitter cold, it's a relatively safe drive on Metro Detroit roads this evening, but a blast of snow could make tomorrow morning's commute mm -hmm. a very different story. As always with winter weather, the timing, timing is so important. And we've got a few dozen schools already canceling for tomorrow amid concerns about buses getting where they need to go. Start things off here at 6 with Kim Adams and the latest on the forewarned weather alert. Kim. Well, keep in mind, there are also buses that may not have been run since Friday because most schools have been closed for the last three days. And, it, you know, it's an inch or two of snow. And, and I know what you're saying. You know, they would never close school when I was a kid for an inch or two. It's, it's the timing of it. We've seen this twice in the last week where an inch of snow or less causes all kinds of problems. So it's the timing. It's also the temperatures. Our temperature tomorrow will be right at 20 degrees. Salt will work, but not very efficiently. Right now, we're in the teens. Everywhere you go, wind chills have improved. We're now at zero in Ann Arbor. Five above zero is what it feels like in Pontiac. Three above in Mount Clemens and at City Airport. So tomorrow, we'll get about an inch or two. Uh, timing of it will be key. If it's delayed by an hour, which could happen, it might come right after the morning commute. But at this point, it does look like it will come sometime between 5 a.m. and 11, p uh, 11 a.m. and then in the afternoon, it will wind down. And then another round on Friday, as much as an inch, maybe two, and then still cold for this weekend with another morning, Saturday morning, with those wind chills below zero. But tomorrow we get up to 26 degrees. That's snow in the morning. I'll talk about round two of the snow and also a warm up. Some good news coming our way in just a few minutes. Okay, Kim, thank you. And when temperatures are this low, it affects drivers in different ways. And right now, a lot of electric vehicle drivers dealing with issues charging and declining battery life on their cars. Victor Williams live with us now. Victor, you've been talking with some drivers who are pretty frustrated. Oh yeah, that's right, Devin and Kimberly. A lot of them tell me that this is what they're dealing with. Machines that are just unavailable or not working. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's very unfortunate. It's an inconvenience. Um, I actually made a complaint two days ago. Charging her EV has been nothing but frustrations for Janisha Messiah, with the temps continuing to drop. Every station you go to, there may be four stations and two of them work. The cold weather is leading to major delays with some charging stations flat out not working. For Terrence Robinson, it takes even longer to charge up the car from E to F. It usually takes an hour to charge, so uh, I got another hour, so most more than likely going to be here two hours. Another issue seems to be the vehicle's not holding as much of an electric charge. Taryn says he loses about 20% of his car's driving capability with wind chills as little as 20 below zero. With a full charge, I usually get about 240, 245, but what the really frigid temperatures, it knocks it down to about one night, 190 miles, 200 miles. But Paul Eisenstein from Headlight.News says that's normal for any car. You'll lose range on these and your fuel economy can drop by as much as 20% on a gas vehicle. It's important, particularly with an EV, to try to warm it up before you head out to maximize your range. Regardless, some drivers are now having second thoughts. Give me a gas car any day. I would rather just go to the gas station and fill up for the week and be done. Um, this, it, it's not worth it, no. And as you guys just heard from Mr. Eisenstein, preconditioning your vehicle is really the best way. If you have one of these chargers at home, Go ahead and charge it while you're warming up your car, but like we've said many times before, not everybody has the capability to do so. Victor Williams, local. Exactly right, and all the more frustrating if it says unavailable on the yeah, uh, charger as right. it does uh, right behind you there. All right, Victor. All right, well, with these frigid temperatures, one of the biggest concerns is for those living on the streets. Warming centers are opening across the region, and outreach teams are in the neighborhoods to find those who need shelter. We rode along with Covenant House Michigan today as they handed out gloves, hats, snacks, and rides to anyone at risk. We not exempt from being in a homeless situation. And if anything happened to us, and we have children or nieces and nephews, you will want an organization to walk up and say, do you need help? We got our gloves, we got our hats, just in case they don't trust us to say, uh-uh, I'm through with shelters, I don't wanna go back. We can say, we still here, just, just for emergency needs.
True, so true. Well, Covenant House Michigan caters to youth and young adults up to age 24, but if you're a bit older than that, they'll still do what they can to help. And with such extreme conditions still here, our forewarned weather alert coverage is extending into tomorrow. So tune in at 4.30 for the bus stop forecast. Plus, our morning team will have the latest on school closings, which you can also check on our website at clickondetroit.com. Now, when winter weather hits, we want roads and parking lots to be safely clear of snow and ice. Well, that process led to tragedy in Frazier as a plow driver backed over an elderly woman. It happened near the intersection of 15 Mile and Hayes. Sean Lay joining us now. It's a, that's a shopping center in that area that has a lot of people coming and going, Sean. People coming and going today. We saw very elderly people coming and going to get their hair done at the shopping center at a salon there. Listen, people inside the salon, they say they saw the driver come in, push snow in one space, and then they believe too fast, back up. They heard something and they heard something again. They ran outside to help. This is absolute tragedy here and police now say that driver is under arrest. Horrible, devastation, completely upsetting. It should have never happened. The stylists at Salon Inspire at 15 and Hayes and Frazier are still upset by what happened in the parking lot here yesterday. They don't want to be on camera, but it's important to them to share what they saw. A beloved 86 year old who was so independent, so sharp, had just gotten her hair done. She was walking to her car when Frazier police confirm a truck from a nearby landscaping business came in to salt the lot, hit her, running over her twice. And that's when I screamed. It wasn't bad. It was a human and it was Sue and I went running out the door and I was the first one to her. This stylist is still devastated. She and her co-workers tried to help. We brought her towels. We kept it underneath her. The library brought her fleece blanket so we could cover her, put it underneath her. She says it took a while for the plow driver to get out. And then the first thing he said when he walked up was, please don't be dead. And in my head, I'm like, you don't want her to be not dead because of that, but because obviously now you're panicking about yourself. That driver was arrested on the spot. The 86 year old was simply trying to head home. She was going to go grocery shopping that day, but she decided not to because it was too cold. So she just wanted to go home and stay warm. Back here live, having the conversation inside the salon was just even difficult today. Such a sad, sad situation. Driver is in custody right now, waiting on toxicology. So police tell me we met with them. The investigation continues, but charges could come as soon as that toxicology comes back. Mm -hmm. We're live today. Sean Lee, Local 4. Back oh, to that's you. so tough. All right, Sean. 86 years old. Yeah. The Macomb County Sheriff's putting out a warning tonight about scammers taking advantage of Detroit Lions fans who are trying to secure their seats for Sunday's playoff game. In this case, the tickets were advertised in a Facebook post. The buyer and seller then agreed on a price and arranged for payment through Venmo. Then came the big red flag. The seller wanted more money just to transfer the tickets into the buyer's name. He realized something was wrong, walked right into the Macomb County Sheriff's Office to report it. Experts say one of the best ways to avoid scams is to never, ever, 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 ever send money to someone you haven't met in person. Yeah, well, we're, <laughs> My we're goodness. Just so much of this. Right? I know. It's such yeah. a hot ticket. Yeah. Well, it is part of the week when teams in the NFL playoffs engage in a little. Let's call it psychological warfare. They start complimenting each other excessively. And Lions coach Dan Campbell approaching that task with, you know, the kind of intensity we expect from Dan Campbell. Yeah, the Bucks want, if they want their coach, and if they want bulletin board material, that's what I'm trying to say, they you won't know. find it coming yeah. out of Allen Park. I'm no. still, how many Evers was that? Ever, ever, how many <laughs> still was stuck on that. There was a lot of Ever, Ever, Evers. Don't well, do it. It is a love fest for sure between Dan Campbell and Bucks head coach Todd Bowles. Campbell spoke glowingly about Bowles today. The Bucks this season at one point were four and seven, but Bowles resurrected them, and here they are. Campbell says Bowles got a solid grip on the job at hand. He's all about, this is what we got to do, this is how we do it, and calm, calm down, we'll be just fine. So, and that's why his team's playing the way it's playing, uh, you know, one of the reasons. So, you know, um, be a big challenge here. But they are, they're playing with a lot of confidence. And that's because mm -hmm. of Todd Bowles, who has instilled yeah, that in yeah. them. Yeah, four and seven. They won uh, six of the next seven. Really so turned it around. Probably yeah. a different team different than team. the one the Lions Total, faced absolutely. right early no in the question. year. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. All right, Brian.
A Wyandotte man might be head and shoulders above the rest when it comes to demonstrating his loyalty to the Honolulu Blue and Silver. And when you see him, you will know why we're saying that. Will Jones joins us live from Ford Field. Will, we're talking about tattoos. I've been waiting for a long time to see this story when you teased it at the beginning of the 5 o'clock <laughs> newscast. Hey, Kimberly and Devin, yeah, lion's tattoos on his head, not one, but two. And Alex Papp wants to make clear he got them long before this winning season, and it's finally paying off. When you first meet Alex Papp, it's hard to make eye contact initially because you're so focused on what's on each side of his head, but he's used to it. I just want to know that they're real and they're not painted on. The Lions logo is tattooed on both sides of his head. He got them done in 2009. Very painful. This one, uh, I had a toothache and every time it, it took like two hours each on each side to do. But that's not all. Take a look at his forearm. This dates back to 2003. I got this and like four days later, they changed the logo. They put the black outline on it. And then uh, this one, I'm like, man, I hope they don't change the logo. I'm gonna be so mad. Alex got the body art when being a Lions fan was painful. And we would uh, paint up and do whatever. And I said, I'm tired of painting up every weekend. So I started getting tattoos and I'd be like, no, I don't have to paint up. They're like, why would you get that team? They're the worst team in, you know, when I got them, they're the worst team in football. You know. And now when people see you with the Lions. I'm a genius. Everyone's like, it's finally paying off. That's all my all my, you know, friends tell me. Well, it's finally paying off. You know, I'm not gonna cry about it, you know. But man, I'm just like on the edge of my seat, just almost hyperventilating. It's just it's incredible. Have you thought about getting any more tattoos? Now? Always. I want to get this one. This will be my next Detroit Lions tattoo. But this is also going on my next artificial leg. See, I'm a real fan. This is like 2016. Alex used to be a season ticket holder. He loved going to games. Now he enjoys them from his living room. And I have to say on a personal note, I was inspired by my fellow bald brother using his bald head as a canvas. <laughs> We're live at Fort Phil, Will Jones, local four. Think about all the time he's saving by not having to paint his face every Oh, that's right. It's, it's just head. there all the time. <laughs> Will, this, the uh, the tattoo chair next to him is uh, available if you want to slide in there. And <laughs> bald brother. <laughs> there you go. Oh, look at that beautiful head. Oh, Oh, that looks good. All right, oh, well. thank you, Will. <laughs> and we've got you covered Sunday leading up to the big game here on Local 4. Be sure to catch our all-in playoffs edition special live from Ford Field starting at noon. Uh, Bernie's going to be along with us, along with Hobie and Nick, Sunday at noon on Local 4, and we will stream it live on Local 4 Plus. By the way, the dedication that guy had, you know what the record was in 2009? That wasn't when, when we were 0-16. No, they were 2-14. and 14. <laughs> That is As a believer. Yeah, yeah. right. To get him there. All right.